let's say, what are all the ways that you can make VRE happen? And then we'll go through the list that you guys give me, and then we'll identify some of the things that are actually currently happening. Not because you want them to happen per se, but just they happen to be happening as well. And then we can talk about those things individually, and we'll talk about the next steps after that. So that's the so ways that we spread it, you mean? Yeah, okay. give me all the ways, like the dirtiest possible way you can think of. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Let me know how you can make VRE happen on a day. So the other technique you did, Mohammed, was Triz. Mm -hmm. So what's Triz and how does it work? Okay, so Triz, in my opinion, is <laughs> the greatest PD tool. I love Triz. <laughs> so basically what you do with Triz is that you try to identify a negative outcome. So for example, everyone becomes infected with something and you want to identify all the steps that you would make that negative outcome happen. And then you go back to that list and then you identify the things that are currently in practice, not necessarily because you want them to be in practice, but it's just kind of part of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And then you use those sort of steps or things that you've identified as a means to begin your PD process and start you know, to overcome your barrier. You want to start? So, let's go. <laughs> Don't wash your hands. Okay. There you go. No hand washing. And I hope you can read my chicken scratch later. I hope I can read it after the fact. How about not wiping down um, the equipment? Okay. What else? Don't change gloves. Sorry? Do not change gloves. Don't change gloves. Okay, what else? How about going into a isolation hall with no gown. Okay. No protection. No PPE. Okay. And taking materials from one room and putting them in the other room. Okay. Touch on the surfaces. Say that again, sorry? Touch on the surfaces. With the okay. Dead okay, what else? And let your patient go out into the hallway without okay. pro proper protection. How about leaving the room with the gallon and gloves? <laughs> now you're getting it. They do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we should fire infection control. <laughs> Personally, that's my not idea. Not the not the No, some bad patients Buy your iPad. Yeah. <laughs> what else? How about how about when they when the patients discharge? How, no offense to housekeeping. The room's not. <laughs> when they fire. The room's not. The room's not clean properly. Okay. Or like, rooms. Yeah. yeah or or like beds are moved out into the hallway and it's not wiped down. Like. Okay. So. Like when, like when the patient gets no discharged. Cleaning? Of of the After room. Discharge. Yeah. yeah. What else? How about new admission who has a history of DRE and the staff is not informed or... So no communication about infection? Yeah, that, yeah. that's happened. Sorry. Sandra, <laughs> you are... It's true. It's true. We had that. I think we need to have a meeting. I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> okay, what else? It's good, Sandra. Yeah, so you did well. <laughs> What else can you do? How about when it's a room with four patients, one isolation and the other three is not isolation, oh, so the same one. Yeah. Yeah. You go to the DC, then the same. Yeah. Then housekeepers used to can clean one or twice a day. Mm. It's just for BOE? It's just for BOE? Or is it CDFMR? Right. You know what? It could be anything. How about commode chairs? Because sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chairs. Chairs. yeah. And like who spreads it? Cleaning. <laughs> part, of, part of equipment, yeah. Okay, so the actual part of the equipment. Yeah. No way to make your No one. Anything else? Super difficult. Or the oximetry. Yeah. That's part of the equipment. Those ones, when it was a discharge or, or even when they clean with the patient inside to check the oximetry, the oh, oximetry. Bedside oximetry. It's so. like falls in the floor, they switch from bed two to bed to bed one. I don't it's know all across, that. like. You put bed one, put the finger there to check, then the bed two goes to the cell one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they keep in like this because it's just a finger. So there. it falls on the floor. Yeah, it wasn't, so we'll it's, say it's broken. We'll make it's sure all over the place. Falls. It's all yeah. over the place. Okay. But that, to me, is not a good. But, but, but they stay in the room. They stay in the room. But when it goes from you, it's all to bed two. It's all like. Oh, okay. How would patients belonging? Yeah, cross contamination. Yes. Like a, 
all so all belong there in the one bag, blue bag, and it's all mixed up with the shoes and uh, all. So we should mix everyone's belongings yep. together. No, 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 that are currently in practice. Not again, not because you know you intend them to be, but you know, just kind of what happens in our day to day. So no hand washing? Is that something that happens? Well, yeah, so not, enough hand hand not enough hand washing, so we'll just put a little check mark beside that. Not wiping down equipment? Not enough. Not enough. Yeah, okay. right. um, not changing gloves. Uh, I always uh, change gloves. I change. Yeah. Yeah. Have you observed it happening? Gloves. I observe. You observe it? Yes. Okay. Yes. So for example, in the video you saw, we said, how do you infect everyone with VRE? Everyone gave a bunch of suggestions, no hand washing, fire eye pack, and the whole list kind of went on. And then we're able to go back and say, okay, no hand washing is an issue, so let's you know tackle that potentially through a discovery and action dialogue or through some other PD tool such as the Wise Crowds and see where we can go from there. I've used Triz a couple of times and you know the video being one and then once um, on the transplant unit and I think it's a great opener because it's fun to do right you kind of you start off by thinking oh I, let's list the ways of all these different things and you, you you don't really necessarily think that you contribute to the problem per se right when we put this video up on the web mm -hmm. and people from outside of healthcare let's say patients or families see healthcare workers designing a system to spread infections to them right um, how do we sort of explain to them that what we're doing is a good thing, that this process actually gets at some of the problems? I think for me, what is, what is really great about that process is that it's highlighting to us that healthcare workers do know. I mean, I think we should, you know, it, it's, it's good to know that the knowledge base is there, that healthcare so workers do understand how, what those steps are to you know, spread hospital acquired infections. That, you know, you don't need the infection control expert in the room telling them what the steps are to make that happen. They know that. They're not purposely trying to, you know, participate in that system that they've just designed. Um, so I think it shows that knowledge isn't the, isn't the real key here um, and that there's a lot more complex issues going on. And I think it's a real eye-opener for healthcare workers once they see once they come up with those things and see the list and see some of the things that are actually happening on the yeah. day to day. It's, I mean, you're identifying the steps to make the negative outcome happen, but in doing so you're also identifying the smaller problems that contribute to the larger problem of infection control. So it breaks things down into sort of digestible chunks. Yeah. Um, and like I said, it's, it's winning the battle before you, you win the war. Yeah. Um, and so I th I, yeah, and I think it's eye-opening. I think in those sessions you see the shift from people having laughing maybe a little bit because somebody throws out a really crazy suggestion um, and then once you get back to looking at the list and looking what, at what's actually happening of the things that you stated you can see sort of the mood shift and it does yeah. become serious and I think people do take those things seriously and they're like wow you know we're, we're actually contributing to this. Yeah. It's we almost like realize. it's allowing them to step outside of what they normally do. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because you know, when you're busy in your everyday, you don't really pay attention to the fact that what you're doing is good or bad. You're just doing it. Right. And suddenly you're seeing it through a different eyes almost. Yeah.